What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Thrill Pack Cards. I'm Josh. I make videos about collecting sports cards. Got back into the hobby recently. Used to collect really avidly as a kid. If this is your first time here and you want to see exactly how I go about growing my collection in all sorts of creative, fun, and affordable ways, interacting with some of the coolest and most interesting collectors in the hobby, and all sorts of other sports card related stuff, including regular giveaways with awesome prizes. Start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Today I'm doing a Fairfield challenge with baseball. I've done it for football and basketball for, so far, so I figured I would round it out and try one for baseball, and we're getting started right now. All right, let's get into these very field baseball boxes. I got these at Walgreens. I was actually looking for that other bigger box, forget what it's called, but they were sold out. The guy said that, the, uh, the guy that worked there said that his coworker always buys them out every time they go to shelf them. So probably don't have a chance of getting those bigger ones. I I think they're, those are new for 2019. I think they came out in the summer. So the other Fairfield boxes that I did were, there weren't loose cards in here. So this is actually a new packaging, standardized, I noticed, for all the sports. Haven't checked them out on social yet, but yeah, it's noticed that new packaging. I'm going to go ahead and just open up both of them. And then we'll go through everything in one shot. So I wonder if all of these packs have the same, what is this? Oh gosh, is it like 90 or 91 Donruss? I wonder if all of them have this pack, which would not be the greatest. And let's make sure there's nothing else here. So it says there's 100 baseball cards plus one pack. So I think we got everything out of there. Let's put these off to the side. Let's go through this first pack over here. See if we can find anything good here. And then we're going to assemble a team. Let's try to do a whole field of nine players. So we got some, right off the bat, one of the worst sets in the history of baseball cards, 91 Fleer. Terry Steinbeck. Ray Lankford. Chad Hermanson. Bernard Gilkey. It's <laughs> a good one for uh, Jonathan H. Don Mattingly. There you go. That's probably going to be our first baseman. I'll put Donny Baseball over here. Unless we get a better first baseman. I don't know who a better first baseman would even be. I'd probably still pick Don Magley over Mark McGuire. Mr. Strickland, Grant, Glenn Brooke Braggs. I wonder if we should pick a coach. That would be cool. Roddy Reed. There we go. Joe Torrey. We'll put him aside and say, say we're going to pick a coach. A manager, excuse me. Floyd Bannister, Drew Kashner, Daryl Strawberry. I'll put him aside in case we need him for the team. Jason Isringhausen, Pascal Perez. I'll probably do like one starting pitcher and one relief pitcher. Maybe a, if I get enough pitchers, I'll do a starter, a reliever, and a closer. There's Aaron Boone in there. Highly underrated player, in my opinion. Had that clutch. Was that him or his brother? Is that Brett Boone that had that clutch home run for the Yankees? Blanking on that off the top of my head. Ruben Sierra. Might need him. Geraldo Parra. Andre Scalaraga. Does he play first base? First base, yeah. Okay, so might have to pick him, actually. Well... That's going to be hard. I think you'd have to pick Don Mattingly. Some prospects card. Mark Lemke. Second baseman. 
We've got a Jack Morris. So far, no real, nothing even halfway decent in terms of card collecting. So far, this is a thumbs down. Vince Coleman. Let's see what else we get. There's a nice Topps Chrome Ichiro. I think you could play. I think we could probably be liberal with our outfielders, right? Outfielders could just generally play any, anywhere. Garrett Anderson was a pretty good defender. Joe Carter. I don't think that's the same Joe Carter that's on the was on the Blue Jays, is it? Jack Jones, Steve Gibraltar, Rich Aurelia, Chuck Finley, Will Myers, Mike Witt. There you go, Ryan Sandberg, that's our second baseman. Eric Chavez, pitcher I don't know. Ooh, Cliff Lee, the solid pitcher. Career ERA is 359, 1,500 strikeouts. Might need him for the rote. Other Skaggs. Some other guys. Oh, this is pretty low, quali <coughs> low quality in terms of uh, finding hits. We went through with these already. Hopefully, hopefully we get one at least one good rookie card out of here. I think they're they're pretty uh, cheap though. I mean those boxes. I think they're only like five ninety five. So as opposed to the other ones that I opened, I think those were like closer to twenty. David Cohn. Put him aside just in case. Jack Clark. Mancini. Sandy Alcantara. Sean Green. Hopefully we don't need him. Mark Mulder. Another Mark Mulder. Barry Larkin, probably the best shortstop we got so far. I really like this design. I said that in the last video, but 2015 tops is awesome. Mulder, truth is out there. Let's see, we get over here. Daryl Kyle, Bill Wegman, wow, so far this is the oldest card we got, and it's got weird air bubbles in it, 86 tops, it's a bunch of scrubs really, Lance Johnson, Uh, it's going to be hard to field the whole team. There we go. We got Lee Smith. The heck is that? Triple play. Is that Ryan Sandberg? Oh, Mark Grace. <laughs> okay. George Bell. He was pretty solid. John Smoltz. Here's our reliever, most definitely. Mark Grace, we already got a first baseman. Tony LaRusso, we already got Joe Torre as our coach. I mean, if we find something better, we'll swap them out, but. Carl Pavano, Darren Erstead, Alex 
Rocks, Rios. Nothing really. Okay, let's open up this pack. This is 90s down there. So we got Alan Trammell. We do need a shortstop. Eric Davis. Goose Gossage. We got a lot of pitchers. We're going to have to make some decisions. And also, as far as rules, if you want to call it that, I think what we'll do, what I did with the past videos is rather than saying, oh, Goose Gossage at his prime, it's going to be Goose Gossage and all the other players at the time pictured in the photo. So Goose Gossage is like 100 years old at this point. Ricardo, Harold Baines, close to his prime. Mike Schmidt, still pretty solid in 1990. Let's see. He only had, well, he only played like a third of the year. Yeah, he was going downhill pretty fast at that point. Let's see what his average was. Where's his average at? RBIs, home runs. You have average on here? Do you not have batting average on the back of this car? That's the most. Oh, there it is. 203. He never really hit for great average. I mean, he only had one year over 300, but he hit for a lot of power. Let's see, what, what was his best year? Best year was probably 74. 74, yeah, it looks like 74 he had. 36 home runs, 116 RBIs, led the league in home runs, but also led the league in strikeouts. So he was a big uh, boomer bust hitter, it seems like. I didn't watch Mike Schmidt growing up. He only, only was in the league for a couple years. We got uh, Jack Morris already. Bernie Williams and Kirby Puckett. Okay, Kirby Puckett. This is probably the best player that we got so far. And I don't think we're going to need Bernie Williams. Put Kirby aside. All right, let's go into the second pack. So this would be a debatable one, Luis Aparicio. At the time, he was retired, 2001. So I guess we said pictured in the photo. So since this picture, <laughs> to get all pedantic here, the picture is actually from, I don't know, 60s, 70s. So... We're going, we're going to go off the time period in the picture, not when the card was printed, which is a little bit of a nuance. Steve Finley, Mark Grace, we already got one of these. This pack already looks pretty similar. The best card we got was a Kirby Puckett 1991 Donruss, then... They're probably making pretty good profit on these boxes, even even with it only at six dollars. Cliff Floyd, Cliff Lee, where'd he got Cliff Lee? Come on, give me it. Well, I mean, they got 90, 91 Bowman, they got 91 Bowman in here, so maybe I'll get a Chipper Jones rookie. Dimitri Young, that's a nice looking card. David Justice. Second year card, I think. David Justice. Got a lot of outfielders, though. All right.
Let's see how we can improve our team in this deck. Daryl Kyle, Pete and Cavillia. Terry Pendleton is not bad. He played third base. Derek Bell. I'm confusing him with Derek Lee. Guy Hoffman. Wow, this is a this is tough going here. Another Wee Smith, exact same Wee Smith. Orioles leaders. Ray Lankford, Ruben Sierra again. Oops, put that in the wrong pile. Let's see, the last one we had was Pendleton. Trevor Story. Might have to be our de facto shortstop. Or do we get Barry, Lark Bar Barry Larkin? Oh yeah, we got Barry Larkin already. Terry Steinbach, those are really nice looking cards. I don't think we have a decent catcher yet, so. Put him Ooh, here we go. AJ Reed, autograph. Hey. The autograph card. I think it's one and it says one and four contain a hit. So this must be a hit. AJ Reed autograph. It's pretty nice. Is he still playing? I don't think he was on the Astros, was he? Gary Carter. Later in his career, but I'm gonna have to compare some stats there to pick between him and Steinbach. Steinbach's not like great or anything, but don't really have a lot of choices to pick with the uh, catchers. Sleeve for this auto. So far, that's our best card. She's not saying much. <laughs> but hey, it's a, at least it's an auto still. Pat Kelly. There we go, Mark McGuire. Maybe we'll go with a designated hitter in the lineup. So I'll do the positions and then I'll put them in. I'll put them in batting order. Eh, maybe we'll do batting order. I don't know. Because then I could sneak Mark McGuire in as a DH if we have a DH instead of instead of a pitcher that hits. Andre Scalaraga. Charlie Huff. He's like 100 years old at that point. Ooh, Paul Canerco. He's a first baseman too, right? Pretty sure he's a first baseman. He had a couple of really good years. Ooh, there's a Gary Carter 
with an older photograph. So that looks like it's like 89 or something. Plus we'll put that, put that aside for Carter's kids team bag. If anybody's really, really passionate about collecting a certain player and it's not, you know, like the hottest, like dark, you know, uh, <laughs> Darko, uh, Luca, it's not like Luca or somebody where all the cards are worth a ton of money, then let me know and I'll start a free team bag for you. Like, uh, we got one started for Carter's kids. We got one started for, um, sports card collector. Uh, Faith Family and Cards, got one for SF Cards, we got a bunch of them started, and once I get once I get enough of them, like a full, thick team bag, I'll send them out, so just let me know if there's anybody that you PC that's, you know, more on the uh, easier to find, and obviously won't be sending out, probably, probably won't be sending out free, you know, relic autos of, like, uh, Ronald Acuna or something, if that's who you PC, but Nevertheless, let me know down in the comments below who you PC so I can uh, keep you in mind when I come across cards, especially the ones that I get at the thrift store, so I can find them a new home. So here's a numbered card, 9 out of 9.99, and there we go. We got our starting pitcher. Is a Verlander. So there's our starting pitcher. I got another Bernard Gilkey. Ray Ordonez. He was a crazy infielder. Remember that uh, pop-up slide that he used to do? He wasn't a very good hitter, but he was an incredible shortstop. Maybe he'll be Barry Larkin's backup. I have to come back to that. Ron Gant. I already got too many outfielders. Oh, we went through these already. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Another junk wax pack. Bo Jackson. Nice. Is our left fielder? That's for sure. Juan Martinez, Ruben Syria, Kurt Schilling. Can't really use Kurt Schilling as a reliever. I guess, you know, if we were thinking World Series scenario, we could. So maybe we'll just pick. Yeah, let's just break that rule because it'll be more fun. Let's pick, you know, any th three pitchers that we want in the. I guess it's mostly me deciding that I want in starting pitcher, relieving pitcher, and closer. I think for closer, it's more important to pick a real closer, but let's say we're in like a World Series scenario, Game 7, where we don't mind throwing uh, Kurt Schilling in, as long as he didn't pitch too many innings the night before. All right, so let me take a little time to deliberate here, and I'll come back with some of the tougher decisions and what I chose for my lineup. All right, so here's what I came up with. Probably not gonna do a batting order just because it feels like it's a little bit arbitrary since all these players are pretty solid. But in terms of the field, here's what I got. So, and there were some really tough decisions here. So starting pitcher, oh, I got the wrong starting pitcher on top. So starting pitcher, I got Justin Verlander and then I'm bringing in Cliff Lee in reliefs. This is uh, getting a little creative with uh, pitching since these are guys are both really starting pitchers, but this is a Game 7 World Series scenario. So Justin Verlander starting. Cliff Lee's coming in for a few innings, hopefully not more than a few. 
And then I'm throwing John Smoltz in the closer role, even though he was never really a closer. But in this scenario, we're using John Smoltz as our closer. We got Gary Carter playing catcher. And that's mainly because the picture in the photo looks like it's from the 80s. If it was from the 90s, then I don't know. Probably may, may have still went with him just because my next best option was Terry Steinbeck. So we got Gary Carter catching for Justin Verlander. Over at first base, we got Donnie Baseball, Don Mattingly. Not in the Hall of Fame yet. I think he has some type of... There's, they passed some new bylaw that allows him... His, his Hall of Fame status expired, but I think they recently passed some new bylaw that allows him to get in under some other rules, so he'll probably be in the Hall of Fame soon. I think it's pretty weird that he's not in the Hall of Fame already. I've got Mark McGuire playing designated hitter. So Justin Verlander won't be batting. Mark McGuire will be batting for him. And then in the outfield, I have Kirby Puckett playing right field. Uh, they're a little bit out of position in the outfield, but I mean, these guys are so good at, at outfielding. It doesn't really matter. The one that I think matters the most is who you're putting in center field. And I don't think Bo Jackson. I think he played center field a little bit, but he's listed as a left fielder here. But the guy ran like a 3-3-40 at the combine or something. So he's my center fielder. I don't care <laughs> where he played. This guy can track down a ball from anywhere. He literally one time caught a ball and then walked up the wall and walked back down. You guys remember that? That was an insane baseball moment. And then I got Ichiro out in left field. I couldn't put him on the bench just because he's probably the best hitter out of all these guys. So Ichiro in left field. Then back in the infield, I've got Ryan Sandberg at second base. I've got Barry Larkin at shortstop. I've got Terry Pendleton was sort of the de facto third baseman. I was actually tempted to, oh, and before I get into that, Joe Torrey as my coach. Before I get into, uh, so yeah, let's get into what I was talking about here. So I was really tempted to, and you guys probably would think I'm crazy. I was tempted to slide Barry Larkin over to third base because I know he can play third base, right? I mean, Alex Rodriguez moved over from shortstop to third base when they got him on the Yankees. And I was going to put, believe it or not, I know this sounds crazy, but I was going to put Ray, Ray Ordonez uh, at shortstop just for his defense only. But when I looked at, I knew he was a bad hitter, but when I looked at how bad of a hitter he was, I was like, whoa, that's pretty bad. So in 97, he only batted 216. So even though he's probably a better shortstop than Barry Larkin, at this point in his career, Barry Larkin was a better shortstop for the duration of his career. But Ray Ordone has just made some, he had more range than Barry Larkin. So, but obviously Barry Larkin is the better overall player. So I had to keep Terry Pendleton in there at third. And then in terms of some other people that got snubbed, I could have actually put Alan Trammell. That might have been a better play to put Alan Trammell at shortstop and then move Barry Larkin over to third. That's probably slightly better. Uh, you know what? Let's see. I, I think Terry Pendleton is a little bit better of a hitter than An Alan Trammell. Let's see. Home runs. Yeah, maybe not. Okay, yeah, all right, that, we'll do that. We'll move Barry Larkin over to third. I know he can play third, and we'll put Alan Trammell at shortstop. You guys probably out there are like, really, you're going to pick Terry Pendleton over Alan Trammell? I don't think, uh, you know, Alan Trammell's in the Hall of Fame. Terry Pendleton's not. Harold Baines, these are some of the notable snubs. Harold Baines got snubbed just because Bo Jackson, Kirby Puckett, and Ichiro. Uh, I, like I said, I couldn't put Ichiro on the benches because he's, Probably the best hitter out here. Luis Aparicio got snubbed. 
I didn't realize that he only had one season where he batted over 300. I'm big on batting for average, so if I was playing the role of Joe Torre, I mean, actually looking at his stats, I'm not sure what the big deal is with him. Maybe I'm missing something. Major me is a super clutch player, but I don't really see. Maybe he was an incredible. Actually, that's probably what it was. He's probably an incredible fielder. So I don't know too much about about that because I haven't seen a lot of the video from him. But I'm just guessing that's what it was. Andres Galarraga got snubbed just because we had too many good outfielders. Paul Canerico. Gary Carter's in there. This is just a dupe. David Justice, outfielder. Goose Gossage, because he's too old at that point. David Cohn, because we had this. You could debate having David Cohn in there instead of Cliff Lee. You could debate having Jack Morris. But Jack Morris wasn't really, he was a good pitcher, but he wasn't really a winner. He didn't win a lot with the Tigers. I think, you know, he had winning seasons as far as his record, but his team overall, uh, can't say they were winners. And Trevor Story got snubbed. That's pretty much a no-brainer so i think that was a little bit easier than i thought it was going to be hope you guys enjoyed it if you did make sure you give it a huge thumbs up down below keep watching the channel so you can follow along with all of our adventures got one video for you right here another video for you right here and go ahead and smash that subscribe button right now do it and i'll see you guys in the next video peace out